It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. One of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Case of Murder and the Jewel Thief. Physicians and dentists have had much to do with spreading the fame of Anison. Many have been giving their patients Anison tablets and envelopes for years. These people know how incredibly fast Anison acts to relieve the pains of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. Why not take this tip when you are suffering from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia pain? Take Anison, the modern way to relieve pain. Anison acts promptly. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Next time you suffer pain from a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, don't wait for relief. Try Anison. You'll be delighted with its incredibly fast, effective action. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Ask for Anison, spelled A-N-A-C-I-N, at your drug counter today. <laughs> Now for Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the jewel thief. Our scene opens in the office which Mr. Keene, the great investigator, shares with his friend and partner, Mike Clancy. The telephone is ringing, and as Mike reaches for the receiver, he is unaware that he's about to raise the curtain on a startling drama. Mr. Keene's office. Is this Mr. Keene? No, this is his partner, Mike Clancy speaking. May I talk to Mr. Keene? It's very important. Well, uh, who's calling, please? Tell him it's Mr. Carl Rollins. Well, just a second. Mr. Keene? Yes, Mike? There's a fellow named Carl Rollins who wants a word with you. He says it's important. Carl Rollins? All right, Mike, I'll take it. Hello? Mr. Keene? Yes? This is Carl Rollins. I've got to see you right away. In regard to what, Mr. Rollins? Well, I... I can't talk about it now, over the phone, but... If it means anything to you... I'm also known as Kansas Carl. Kansas Carl? Stands to preserve us, Mr. Keene. But isn't Kansas Carl the jewel thief the cops have been after for months? Just a moment, Mike. Hello, Mr. Rollins. Yes, Mr. Keene. Where are you calling from? My room's on 10th Street, number 892, apartment 4D. All right. You'll wait there for me? Yes, I'll... What? What? Mr. Rollins. Hello. Hello. What happened, boss? I'm sure I heard revolver shots, Mike. We've got to get over to Rollins' apartment right away. Well, this must be the flat, Mr. Keene. There's the name over the doorbell. Rollins. I don't think there's any point in ringing, Mike. If the door isn't open, we'll have to break it down. It's open, boss. Well, let's go in and keep your gun handy, Mike. Right, boss. The room is empty, Mr. Keene. So it seems, Mike. You want me to go down and see if I can find the landlady or the superintendent? Just a minute, Mike. Do you smell anything? Sure. I smell powder. A gun was discharged in this room a little while ago. There's no doubt that those were pistol shots I heard over the telephone. Yeah, but nothing's disturbed, boss. The place seems empty. Mike, look at the floor. There's blood run along the crack in the wood there. It's coming from under that couch. Quickly, Mike. Pull the couch away from the wall. Yes. Oh. Sands preserve us. There he is. It must be Carl Rollins. With two bullets in his head. He's dead, Mike. I'll see if I can find an identification on him. Eh, he's got a, a wallet in his pocket, Mr. Keene. And a little notebook with some addresses in it. Well, let me have the wallet, Mike. I... It identifies him as Carl Rollins, the man who phoned our office. He was shot down before he could say why he got in touch with me. Well, it beats me, Mr. Keene. 
This fellow was wanted in half the states in the country for jewel robberies. Yes, Kansas Carl was known as the Society Jewel Thief. Well educated, with impeccable manners, he'd impress rich people and then rob them. But why should he get in touch with you, Mr. Keene? Sure, and he'd have known you'd turn him into the police at, at the drop of a hat. Exactly. Maybe that's just why. It... There's someone at the door, boss. Before you answer it, Mike, pull that couch back and hide the body once more. I'll put a chair over the blood stain on the floor. Okay, sir. There. All right, Mike. Now you can open the door. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I must have the wrong apartment. Just a moment, madam. Whom did you want to see? Oh, Mr. Rollins. I... You have the right place. Please come in. Let me introduce myself. My name is Keene, and this is my partner, Mr. Clancy. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. And who are you, may I ask? Mrs. Andrea Mitchell. I'm a good friend of Mr. Rollins. But why are you here? Has something happened to Carl? I'll explain in just a moment. First, I'd like you to tell me, how long have you known Carl Rollins? We met six months ago. As a matter of fact, we're engaged to be married. I'm a widow, Mr. Keene. And what business was Mr. Rollins in, Mrs. Mitchell? He's a jewel importer. <laughs> I'll say he was. I beg your pardon? All right, Mike, we shouldn't wait any longer. You better notify the police. The police? Mr. Keene, what's happened to Carl? Please tell me. Carl Rollins has been murdered, Mrs. Mitchell. <gasps> murdered? Oh, oh no. No, he, he could... Oh. Well, she's fainted, Mr. Keene. I'll take care of her, Mike. You call the police and report the murder of Carl Rollins, alias Kansas Carl. Are you feeling stronger, Mrs. Mitchell? Mr. Keene, you... You said that Carl... We found his body in his apartment here just a few minutes before you came in. Well, Lieutenant Hale of the Homicide Squad said he'll be down right away, boss. All right, Mike. Where is Carl's body, Mr. Keene? Perhaps you better not see him, Mrs. Mitchell. Remain where you are in that chair until you feel better. Who killed him? Carl had no enemies. His life was above reproach. Mr. Keene... Either the lady never knew what was going on, or she's a pretty good actress. Never knew what? Mr. Keene, what does Mr. Clancy mean? Carl Rollins was a well-known jewel thief, Mrs. Mitchell. The police have been after him for months. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. It happens to be true. But Carl loved me. He, he was a respectable man, Mr. Keene. He, he couldn't... His respectability was just a pose, Mrs. Mitchell. However, I have a feeling... Perhaps his life had changed some time before he died. But I'm afraid you'll have to answer a great many questions for the authorities. You don't think they'd connect me with... With Carl Rollins' past? Perhaps they might. However, if you confide in me, Mrs. Mitchell, I may be able to help you. Well, there's so little I can tell you, Mr. Keene. I... I met Carl at a dinner dance six months ago. Given by Mrs. Arthur Van Burton. The wife of the banker? Yes. I, I'm i fairly well known in the city, Mr. Keene. My late husband was Elliot Mitchell, the art dealer. When I met Carl Rollins, he was introduced as a jewel importer. I had no idea... He was actually of... a world-famous jewel thief. He was very clever about hiding his real identity. We saw a great deal of each other for several months. And then Carl proposed to me. I accepted and I told my daughter we were getting married in a month. I see. Jean, my daughter is only 17, Mr. Keene. She's at a finishing school in Vermont. I, I don't know what will happen when all this notoriety comes out. I'm not worried about myself. I'm only thinking of Jean. I understand, Mrs. Mitchell. Mr. Keene, if you could help me, I'd be very grateful. I swear I knew nothing about Carl's past. Well, tell me, Mrs. Mitchell, did your husband leave you a great deal of money when he passed away? Oh, no, he didn't. He left debts. Debts I had to pay off with most of his insurance. Did Carl Rollins know about that? Yes, I told him. And he still wanted to go through with the wedding? Oh, yes, Mr. Keene. To tell you the truth, I had to borrow money from him in order to send my daughter back to school. Kansas Carl giving money away? Sure, that takes the cake, Mr. Keene. Mike, I have a hunch that something happened to Carl Rollins' character recently. I believe he changed from being a ruthless thief to a decent citizen. That may have been the reason he got in touch with me 
before he was murdered. Mr. Keene, I swear to you that there was nothing but good in Carl when he died. You've got to believe that. Because if you don't, I know you won't believe my story. And I need your help desperately for my daughter Jean's sake as well as my own. There's just one thing more I want to ask you, Mrs. Mitchell. Did you ever meet any of Carl Rollins' friends or acquaintances? No, Mr. Keene. But there was one woman he spoke of. A woman named Grace Bentley. She was older than Carl, I believe. And when he spoke of her, he almost sounded as if he were talking of his mother, who has been dead for many years. What did he tell you about her, Mrs. Mitchell? Well, just that she was a good friend and he trusted her. Do you know where Grace Bentley can be found? I believe she's a seamstress, Mr. Keene, and lives alone. Oh, I think Carl had her address in a small notebook he always carried with him. Well, that must be the book we found in his pocket, boss. Well, let me see it, Mike. Yes, Grace Bentley's name is in this book, along with her address. Well, Mrs. Mitchell, the police will be here any moment now. Oh, what shall I tell them, Mr. Keene? Just what you told me. But if my name is connected with this murder, my daughter Jean will know. Her friends at school will hear of it and she'll be ostracized. I don't think that'll happen. I'm going to ask the police to keep this case out of the newspapers as long as possible. It may make it easier for us to solve. What about the addresses in that notebook, boss? The police will want to check every one of them, I'm sure, Mike. But we can help them by seeing Grace Bentley ourselves. Perhaps she can shed a little light on... one of the most puzzling cases we've had in months. The number on Miss Bentley's letterbox outside was 12, Mr. Keene. This apartment is number 12, Mike. Remember, one peep out of you, you got a bullet through your head. Oh. Boss, did you hear that? Yes, Mike. Listen. Now, just sit there until I'm through. Try the door, Mike. Softly. It's locked, Mr. Keene. Get your gun out. Can you smash the lock with one shot, Mike? I think so, boss. Right after you shoot, I'll push the door in. Someone's being held up at the point of a gun inside that room. We've got to take him by surprise. You ready, Mike? Ready, boss. Mr. King, there's a woman tied up in that chair there. In the bedroom. He's in the bedroom. Well, after him, Mike. Are you Grace Bentley, madam? Oh, yes, please. This wire is cutting my wrist. Well, I'll, I'll have it off in a moment. Oh, oh thank heaven you've come. Who are you, sir? My name is Keene, Miss Bentley. Why, oh, the famous investigator. Oh, you don't know how glad I am to see you. Well, he got away, Mr. Keene. The bedroom window was open and there's a fire escape leading down to the street. Do you know him, Miss Bentley? Yes. His name is George Darcy. He came to my apartment a few minutes ago with a gun in his hand and tied me to this chair. Do you know why? I think it had something to do with a man I know. Carl Rollins. Miss Bentley, Carl Rollins is dead. Dead? Oh, no. Oh, then it's happened. All his hopes, his attempts to lead a new life came to nothing. I knew Carl very well, Mr. Keene. Did you know that he was really Kansas Carl, a famous jewel thief wanted by the police? Yes. And I might say that I was the cause of his turning over a new leaf and going straight. Suppose you tell me the entire story, Miss Bentley, but... Before you start, I want to send out a police alarm for this man, George Darcy. Have you any idea where he lives? No, Mr. Keene, I haven't. What does he look like? He's tall and, and dark, about 30 years of age. He, he doesn't look like a gunman at all. Telephone that description into the police, Mike. Right, boss. Meanwhile, Miss Bentley can tell me what she knows about Carl Rollins. You know, the more this murder case progresses, the more convinced I am that the final picture may be an amazing one. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the jewel thief. Meanwhile, it's the big medical news wherever you go. It's Krypton, K-R-I-P-T-I-N. The antihistamine wonder drug that taken at the start can kill a cold. Kill it not in days, but in hours. In tests at the United States Naval Hospital, Great Lakes, Illinois, Krypton proved remarkably effective. Was preferred by patients over all other formulas tested. 
For spectacular results, take Krypton at the first sign of a cold. Today at your druggist, get Krypton. Handy pocket size, only 29 cents for 10 tablets. Bottle of 50 tablets, only 98 cents. Less than 2 cents a tablet. Now back to Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the jewel thief. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the murder of Carl Rollins, alias Kansas Carl, a famous jewel thief who preyed mostly on those in the social register. During the investigation, Mr. Keene and Mike rescued a woman named Grace Bentley, a friend of Carl Rollins, who was being held up by a gunman in her modest apartment. The gunman, George Darcy, escaped. But the story Grace Bentley has to tell appears to Mr. Keene to be very important in regard to solving the murder. And as Mr. Keene listens closely... I first met Carl Rollins about a year ago, Mr. Keene. I was taking in washing then and did sewing on the side. That's the way I've been supporting myself. Did you do some work for Rollins, Miss Bentley? Yes. And he was a charming man. Oh, much younger than I, of course. And I felt more like a mother to him than anything else. You didn't know then that he was actually Kansas Carl, the notorious society jewel thief? No, sir. I found that out a few months later. But after I'd gotten to know him well, I realized that there was something fine and decent in Carl that may have been twisted when he was young. So I decided to try to do something about it. What did you do, Miss Bentley? I reformed him. I gave him something more important to live for than money and jewels. In the last few months, Mr. Keene, Carl Rollins had changed completely. He was a different man, even a religious man. Oh, I was very proud of him. What about George Darcy? What did he have to do with Rollins? Darcy was one of Carl's old cronies. They'd often worked together in jewel robberies. When Darcy came here and held me up, maybe he wanted to get even. You see, I was the one who made Carl break off his partnership in crime with Darcy. I just called the police, Mr. Keene, and gave them a description of Darcy. Tall, dark, and around 30. That was the description you gave my partner, Mike Clancy, wasn't it, Miss Bentley? Yes, Mr. Keene. Tell me, Miss Bentley... Do you think George Darcy may have been involved in Carl Rollins' murder? I I don't know. Mm. Have you ever met uh, Carl's fiancée, Andrea Mitchell? No, but Carl told me about her. I understand that she's a wonderful woman. And I was glad when he said he was going to marry her. I was glad that there'd be someone else who'd keep him on the right path. You must have been very fond of Carl Rollins to worry about him that way. He reminded me of my brother, John. He took up a life of crime and died while trying to resist the police. I thought I'd be doing John's memory a service by helping Carl. I see. Is there anything else you can add that might help us in any way, Miss Bentley? No, Mr. Keene. In spite of his past, Carl had turned out to be a very fine man. When he called you, I think he was giving himself up. That's what I imagine myself. Maybe he thought you'd be able to help him by acting as a go-between with the police. Well, Mike, I guess Miss Bentley has told us everything. I'm going down to police headquarters now to see if I can identify George Darcy in the rogues gallery. You want me to go with you, boss? No, Mike. Darcy's still on the loose and he's dangerous. I was thinking of Andrea Mitchell, Carl Rollins' fiance. Darcy might try to strike at her in some way. Suppose you go over to her home, Mike, and I'll join you there in an hour or two. Okay, Mr. Keene. George... Darcy undoubtedly holds the key to Carl Rollins' murder. When we finally get our hands on him, he'll have a great deal to answer for. Will you have another cup of coffee, Mr. Clancy? No, thanks, Mrs. Mitchell. Uh, Do you mind if I smoke, ma'am? Please do. I'm very grateful to Mr. Keene for sending you over to my home. Even though I never met this man, George Darcy, he worries me. After what you've told me about him. Well, Mr. Keene himself will be here any minute now. Sure, and is that a picture of your daughter, ma'am? Yes, that's Jean. She's 17. That picture was taken just before her father died. Why, she's a fine-looking girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's at the door. It must be Mr. Keene. Just a second, Mrs. Mitchell. Mr. Keene wouldn't try to come in without ringing first. 
unless it was an emergency. There's the doorbell now. Well, I'll go out, get out of sight behind them drapes there, just to be on the safe side. Oh, Mr. Clancy, you think it may be... Now, just answer the door, Mrs. Mitchell, like you were here alone. Let me do the rest. (gasps) One scream and I'll shoot, lady. Get inside. Okay. Where is it? Where... Where's what? The loot. And don't fool with me. I want it all. I... I don't know what you're talking about. You and Kansas Carl were going to be married. He must have told you what he did with the stuff. Who did he give it to? Where is it? Stand still, mister. Don't raise that gun or I'll pull this trigger. Drop it. Drop your artillery on the floor. Now just put your hands behind your back. I'll slip a nice pair of shiny handcuffs on them. Hey, I guess that'll hold you for a while, mister. That's probably the boss right now, Mrs. Mitchell. Will you let him in, ma'am? Oh, yes, Mr. Clancy. Mr. Keene. Mrs. Mitchell, I see you have a visitor. Mr. Keene, this man just came in and held me up. If your partner, Mr. Clancy, hadn't been here... I had to put the handcuffs on him, boss. I saw this man going to the house ahead of me, Mike, with his gun drawn. I thought I'd cover him from behind, knowing you were here to protect Mrs. Mitchell. What's your name? Darcy. Sure, and this is George Darcy, the fellow we've been looking for, Mr. Keene. So it appears, Mike. What are you doing here, Darcy? Ask her. What? I don't know what he means. No? Take a look at that pin she's wearing, Keene. What about it? It was stolen eight months ago, along with $100,000 worth of jewels. Why, I never knew this pin was stolen. It isn't very valuable. Maybe not. But the rest of that stuff was worth a fortune. And you know where it is. This, this pin was given to me by Carl Rollins. I never dreamed it was stolen. I'm afraid it could make you an accessory, Mrs. Mitchell. However, by accusing you, George Darcy has opened himself to suspicion of murder. What? Darcy, you thought Mrs. Mitchell was hoarding some of your ex-partner, Carl Rollins, stolen loot. But you wouldn't have dared to come here to get it if you weren't sure Rollins was dead. Well, I... I want the truth, Darcy. Remember, your own life hangs in the balance, too. I didn't kill Carl. I... I knew he was dead because I found his body in his room. You were in his apartment today. Carl was going to turn himself into the police. He was giving up half a million dollars worth of jewelry. A part of that haul was mine, and I wanted to get hold of it. And you came here thinking Mrs. Mitchell knew where those stolen jewels were. She was going to marry Carl, wasn't she? Were you the man who also held up Grace Bentley a few hours ago and tied her to a chair? She told you it was me? Yes, she said you were angry at her because she broke up your criminal partnership with Carl Rollins. I'm not sore at anyone, Keene. It was strictly a business proposition. I wanted my split of those jewels before Carl turned them into the police. All right, Mike. We'll take this man, Darcy, down to headquarters. You're arresting me for murder? No, Darcy. I'm turning you in for attempted robbery. But I'm fairly certain I'll also turn in Carl Rollins' murderer within an hour. The lock on that door is still broken, Mike. Open it without knocking. Okay, Mr. Keene, sir. Wait, the place is pitch dark, boss. There's a light under that door over there. Open the door. It's probably the bedroom. Oh, Mr. Keene, why... What are you doing here? Are you going somewhere, Miss Bentley? I see you're packing a bag. I... I was going to Philadelphia to see my sister. Your sister? Is she as much a figment of your clever imagination as your brother was? What do you mean? Mike, take a look in that suitcase. Okay, boss. Keep away from my thing. One side, lady. So you reformed Carl Rollins, Miss Bentley. You also murdered him. Well, you can't prove that. Oh, no. Just take a look at this, Mr. Keene. There's a false bottom in this suitcase. Why, you... Saints preserve us. There must be a fortune in jewelry here. Yes, Mike. Bracelets, rings, and necklaces that Carl Rollins had stolen over the years, in which he was going to return to the police when Grace Bentley shot him down. Her reforming Rollins was only a device, an excuse to gain his confidence so she could get hold of those stolen gems herself. I've got to hand it to you, Keene. I never thought you suspected me. Would you like to know how you gave yourself away, Grace Bentley? Yes, how? You described George Darcy as being tall, dark, and about 30 years of age. He happens to be short, bald, and at least 40. You gave a false description because you didn't want me to catch him. 
You were afraid he confessed that he suspected you of having Carl Rollins stolen jewels. All right, it's your deal, Keene. But I'll make you a proposition. I can get rid of that jewelry and collect half a million dollars in cash for it. I'll split with you 50-50 if you let me go free. That's quite a proposition. You must have some very good connections in the underworld. <laughs> I ought to. I spent plenty of time up the river. Then you're actually a professional jewel thief with a record, as I suspect. Look, Keene, are you making a deal or aren't you? I'm not, but you are with the district attorney. Uh, I'll kill you. You're not so fast. Let him go. go. Let me go before Faith I... Faith, and she's as strong as a man, boss. If she wants to do a little wrestling, she can wrestle with these handcuffs. The handcuffs will hold her, Mike. Until we replace them with iron bars. Miss Bentley did a good job of reforming Carl Rollins. But I think his love for Andrea Mitchell had more to do with his decision to turn over a new leaf. But as far as I can see, there's only one reform for you, Grace Bentley, and that's the death sentence. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the case of murder and the jewel thief. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Friends, you all know history proves that our American economic system has brought more material means for happiness for more people than any other in the world, and without loss of basic freedoms. To better understand your American economic system, write today for the free booklet entitled The Miracle of America, Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City. That's Box 10, Times Square Station, New York. You'll be proud to own The Miracle of America. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel, Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the case of the two-faced murderer. Now you can forget about piercing, shooting pains of neuritis, neuralgia, and muscular rheumatism. The quick, long-lasting action of heat liniment brings welcome relief to the painful areas, makes you feel like yourself again. Heat warms and soothes, yet does not burn. Heat starts to penetrate as soon as it is applied, keeps on working for hours to bring grand relief from pains of neuritis, muscle soreness, neuralgia, and muscular rheumatism. Get heat liniment. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.